when people ask me what do they need to consider when they're purchasing fine art insurance, what do they need to know, I've been telling them the same thing for over 20 years, and that is that fine art is a very specialized area of insurance, and while there are many carriers that provide the coverage, there are not nearly as many carriers that provide, let's say, homeowners or commercial insurance, for instance. So you need to work with an insurance broker that can be your advocate and help you through the process. Insurance companies aren't going to always provide the best possible terms and conditions, and you're going to need an advocate on your behalf to help you make sure that you get those best possible terms, conditions, and premium. You also need to have an insurance carrier that understands art and is going to be able to pay a loss in the most favorable way. There are three main things to consider when you're looking to buy art insurance for your collection. Number one is to make sure that you're working with an art insurance broker that understands art and the marketplace. Number two is to make sure that you're working with an insurance carrier that's financially stable. And number three, the process needs to really be easy. There are many critical issues that should be addressed when insuring art, but there are three main ones, and those are the scope of coverage, the valuation, and the amount of insurance that you need to purchase. Clients ask me what losses the policy respond to, and when we talk about how that will happen, we're talking about the scope of coverage in the policy. And the policy can respond either on a name perils basis or an all risk basis. Let's say you have a terracotta sculpture in your collection and it's accidentally dropped and it's a total loss. If you have a name perils policy, chances are that loss is not covered. If you have an all risk policy, the loss will be covered because all risk coverage provides coverage for breakage. So now you have a broken sculpture, complete loss. What are you going to collect in the event of that loss from the insurance carrier? There's a couple of ways to collect and it's based on what the valuation clause in your policy is. The valuation clause can be based on agreed value or current market value. So if you have an agreed value policy, it's going to pay a predetermined amount prior to the loss. If it's based on current market value, it could be up or down depending on where the market for that particular artist is at the time of loss. People ask me, how do I know how much fine art insurance to buy? And depending on the valuation clause in the policy, whether it be all risk or agreed value, and other factors like whether you have all your collection in one place, or do you have it at a vacation home, or on a yacht, or on long-term loan to a museum, or in a fine art storage facility, all these factors play into the amount of insurance you need to buy. And at DeWitt Stern, we'll sit down with you and go over that and make sure that the proper amount of insurance is being purchased in your case. The second most important thing to consider is to make sure that your insurance carrier is financially stable, and that's extremely important in today's economic uncertainty. You want to make sure that the insurance company is there to pay in the event of a total loss. The third issue is that the entire buying process should be easy. And what we do at DeWitt Stern are three basic things. Number one, we come and talk to you about your collection and what's important to you. Number two is that we have an application and underwriting process that we help you through. And number three, we provide you with a proposal that's easy to read, understand, and easy to make a decision about the final buying process. In summary, the three most important things to consider when insuring art is number one, work with a broker that understands art, art insurance, and the marketplace. Number two, make sure that your insurance carrier is financially stable and can be there to pay in the event of a loss. And number three, the process should be easy and explained to you before it starts.